I just came from the Pokemon world. I have this device that lets me travel to the Pokemon world. Even though the Pokemon world isn't real, the device kind of makes it real and I can go there physically. It's very complicated. I went there to get this. What is it? Well, what's the most dangerous thing that can happen if you go to the beach in the real world? Maybe you get sunburnt, you might even get attacked by a shark or drown. Well, imagine if you had to worry about giant haunted sandcastles that want to turn you into a zombie and suck the energy from your pet until there's nothing left of it but bones. Let me explain. Now, I love Pokemon, but the games, the manga, and especially the anime tend to gloss over just how dangerous the world would be. And what's worse is all the most hazardous and disturbing aspects of what Pokemon can actually do is only ever referenced or briefly mentioned in passing. We never see it happening for real. That's why I travelled to the Pokemon world, to see the dangerous abilities of one Pokemon for myself. That Pokemon is Palisand. Now, Palisand, for those that don't know, is the evolved form of Sandygast, and Sandygast is pretty scary already. It looks just like a cute little sandcastle, but that's kind of the point. Various Pokedex entries tell us that if children go to the beach, build a sandcastle, and don't knock it down before they go home, well, that castle could become possessed and turn into a Sandygast. That Sandygast can then use its cute sandcastle disguise to lure in other children, and it can take control of them if those children happen to put their hand in the Sandygast's mouth. But why take control of children? Well, while in their zombie-like state, a sandy gasp will force the children to add sand to the sandy gasp's body so it can get bigger and stronger, and when it gets big and strong enough, then it becomes a palisand. Now, palisand is much worse than a sandy gas. Like sandy gas, it takes control of people that touch it and forces them to help it grow. But unlike sandy gas, it has a taste for Pokemon, specifically their vitality. Its Pokedex entries tells us that it siphons away Pokemon's energy while they are still alive, and because of that, the inside of a palisand is littered with the bones of Pokemon that it's killed. The Pokemon anime also seems to imply that there isn't really a limit on just how big a palisand can get. I guess it depends on just how angry or possessed the sand actually is, but the one in this episode gets so angry that Ash is actually trapped inside and struggles to get out even with the help of his whole gang. I know what you're thinking though, a haunted sandcastle that big would be easy to spot, just avoid the beaches where those things are. Well, it's not that easy. The anime also shows us that a sandy gas and a parasand can appear and disappear from the ground at will. So there's no way to know if a pile of sand is just a pile of sand or a huge castle waiting to swallow you up. It's not just haunted sand that makes beaches tricky in the Pokemon world. Have you ever been annoyed by seagulls at the beach trying to get at your food? Well, the Pokemon equivalent is a Wingull. And a Wingull is about, I don't know, that big? Much harder to shoo away a bunch of them trying to get at your picnic. You also have Krabby, a half a meter sized crab Pokemon who bury themselves in the sand. And then there's Seedra, who can spin around to create whirlpools that are meant to be for catching prey, but can also sink fishing boats if you're unlucky enough to get caught in one. And those are just some of the Pokemon that are kind of renowned for being aggressive. Even the Pokemon that aren't known for being violent have powers that can harm you or even kill you if you step on them or scare them in some way. So what's one reason the Pokemon world would suck? The beaches. You can't relax at them. Sure, there's all the obvious threats you probably thought of, like giant unknown creatures lurking in the depth of the ocean, but the dangers are actually more subtle than that. You have seagulls the size of children, and seahorses that can spin around and sink your boat. Even the sand wants to take control of you and make you do its bidding. It doesn't even have to be much sand. A small pile can turn into a palace sand. Even the small amount that I have... Okay, oh god. Uh, the lid must have come off while I was talking. I must have knocked it. That's okay, I don't know if the curse actually works here in the real world. It, maybe it does. Um, thank you for watching. I have to go now. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I have to go out here and deal with a small problem that's happening in my house at the moment. I just wanted to say, if you want to support me and help me maintain and build the device that I use to travel into the Pokemon world, you can help me out on Patreon like Johnny Heller did. Johnny Heller, more like Johnny Heller Rich, because he's got Patreon money. That's one of the perks. I make a pun based on your name. Um, I really should go.